Hey there, it's Overtime with Pastor Brian, and uh, here we are in the pastor's office at the Sweet Home Evangelical Church, and we just kind of, we, this is where the Sunday sermon goes into overtime, and every now and then, well, a lot of times, I cut stuff uh, just because, well, I can't fit it all in uh, during the Sunday morning sermon time, but uh, I wanted to tell a story, and it would have fit with Mother's Day too, but I just didn't have time about... Uh, Oh, a mother is uh, cooking ham, uh, I think for Easter Sunday, but she's cooking a ham and she's telling her daughter, hey, I'm cooking ham. This is a family recipe and this is how we do it. And uh, the daughter says, well, why do you cut the ends off of the ham before you put it in the oven? And the mom says, oh, it's an old family recipe. This is how this is how my mom did it. And this is how her mom did it. And the little girl says, why? And the mom says, well, that's because that's is how we do it. And so the little girl goes to her grandma and she says, hey, grandma, uh, mom and I were cooking a ham, but why do we cut the ends off the ham before it goes in the oven? And her grandma says, well, that's how we do it. That's our family recipe. And that's how my mom did it. And so the little girl, she went to her great grandma and she said, great grandma, what's the deal with the ham? I mean, I know it's a family recipe, but why do we cut the ends off the ham before we put it in the oven? And great grandma says, oh, well, that's because the pan I had uh, is too small for a normal sized ham. And so that's that's a lot of times how tradition goes, where it starts off kind of practical and and then the next people do it because that's how it's been done and and then it just snowballs from there and then we elevate that tradition to oh this is how we do it in this family this is how it's done this is the way you need to do it and and that's how traditions start and sunday we were in matthew 15 and jesus He's talking about inner purity and inner purity that's not that doesn't have anything to do with uh, traditions, following traditions or virtue signaling or anything like that. It is what comes from your heart. Uh, I'm oh, I'm a bit uh, I'm, I'm slightly sad here. Uh, I just you know, I got delayed on things and so I didn't get my dissertation done. Um, and so Corbin uh, University graduation happened last week uh, without me. And uh, I think, I think, I don't know, if things go well, I'm about three or four months away from wrapping it up here. Uh, but, you know, you just got to wait on things. And so Corbin did graduation without me. We'll get him next year. And, uh, and one of the things that kind of cracks me up a little bit about Corbin is, is uh, well, my little brother went to college there years ago when it was called Western Baptist College, and they renamed the school Corbin University. And Corbin, it means a gift devoted to God. However, uh, it is used only once in the Bible, and and in the Bible, it is right in this passage. It's not in uh, Matthew 15 where we were Sunday, but. It's in Mark chapter, I think, Mark chapter 7, where it tells the same story about how the, the Pharisees come and they say, Hey, Jesus, why are you so non-traditional? And you don't do the ceremonial things. You don't do the traditional things that show you're a good person. And Jesus comes back at him and he says, Why are you guys so unbiblical? And they're like, Wait, what? We're biblical. And Jesus says, what about that honor your father and mother commandment of the Ten Commandments? And, and because he knew that the Pharisees had this thing where, where they, would, they would say, hey, you know, I'd like to help out my parents, but that part of the budget is all used up. It is Corban. It is a gift devoted to God. And so can't help out my parents. It's now, you know, the vacation fund, that's still in good shape. But the helping my parents fund, no, that's, that's Corbin. That's a gift devoted to God. And the only time the word Corbin is used in the Bible is Jesus uses it as a negative example. But the Pharisees were doing this, and Jesus points out, you can't just pick and choose. And, 
inner purity is not about how much you give to the church. It's not about what traditions you follow. It's not about if people, you know, you virtue signal and say the right things and people think you're a good person. Inner purity comes from the heart. And Jesus talked about how all these things that happen outwardly where we recognize, hey, this is a good person, this is not a good person, all of that starts in the heart. And so we need to make sure that you know, we are called to be pure and that purity isn't just the things we post online. It's not just what we wear, or what we say or anything. It comes from within and only Jesus can make us pure. Uh, it says in, in uh, the Jesus said in the Beatitudes, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. And, and there is a blessing for those who are pure in heart, but we can't do it on our own. That's why Jesus came. And, and he blesses those who are pure in heart. Those blessings come when we ask Jesus to purify our hearts. Hey, thanks for joining me for overtime. I think we're going to get a midweek update with Pastor Brian and Donna Lynn. And coming up next Sunday, uh, we're going to, oh, we're charging ahead and we're looking at uh, blessings and uh, uh, this idea of getting blessings from God. Uh, hey, have a great day. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Oh, see, it didn't stop. Uh, how about now? Nope. How about now?